So today we're gonna make a 100% sourdough recipe. You have the list of the ingredients with explanation in the description of the video. You will need T65 and T150 wheat flour, fresh sourdough, water and salt. For this recipe we're going to do a fermentolise, so for that you can weigh the water and the sourdough together, pour it into the mixer and then add the flour. We're going to mix in first speed for about 5 minutes and you can stop the mixer. Remember to scrub the bowl everywhere so you don't waste any dough. At this time you can touch the texture of your dough and find that it tears quite easily and is still very sticky. Then let your dough rest for 30 minutes. After this half hour rest, check the texture of your dough again. You will see that it has a good extensibility now and is already holding up well. Now you can add the salt, then start kneading in first speed for about 5 minutes and 3 to 4 minutes in second speed. We will need more kneading time since the dough already has a good gluten network thanks to the fermentolis and we want to avoid over kneading. To be sure that kneading is well done, your dough must be very smooth and well detached from the mix. You can then check the temperature, it must be between 23 to 24, 25 degrees maximum. If it's too hot or cold, adjust the resting time. If it's too hot, reduce. If it's too cold, you can make it a little bit longer. So now you're going to take the dough out of the mixer and you can do a little checkup of the gluten network by stretching it. You almost have to see through thin layer of dough and that means your dough is perfectly kneaded. Then rest the dough for one hour at room temperature. Then give a first fold to the dough. So for that you need to stretch the dough, fold it back on itself. You can do it this way or any other technique that you know should work. It's also completely fine. The important thing is to stretch and roll the dough well. At the end of folding it should have gained a lot of strength and you can feel it by touching it. You can see that it has good and firm consistency, a bit like a well inflated balloon and then you will give one hour rest. After an hour, you will give a second folding. So you fold the dough on itself this way several times again, just to give it a little more strength and one hour rest again. After this last resting time, you will divide the dough. You can just weigh the dough the way as you want I made dough pieces of 600 and 900 gram, then tighten the dough on itself by sliding the dough under your fingers, bringing everything toward the center, which is in contact with the work surface. And when your dough is well rounded, you can feel it because it's quite hard and it has gained lots of strength. We are then going to make a second bowl. I show you again, look how I bring it with my finger underneath in order to give it some strength. Then when you have finished, 
you will leave about 20 minutes of resting time before shaping. So for shaping, you can do it your way or the way I'm going to show you now. The first step is to fold the ones, then fold the top over the first part, then fold again to give a little bit more strength. Then with your finger inside the door, fold over it and close by pressing down on the seam with your other hand. And voila, you have your bata, that's the French name. Then you're gonna roll in the rice flour if you put in a banneton like me. In this case, it won't stick. For the second shaping, same. You fold a first time, then a second time, bring the top back to the center again to improve the strength a little. Then wrap on your finger and close the seam with your second hand. Then roll in rice flour and put in banneton. Always to remember to put the seam on the top. And for the round, you can make it the same way as before on the technique of rounding. And you roll it in the flour, in the rice flour, then put in a banneton. And you leave all of them for a good night of resting time at 5 degrees. The cooking will be done at 230 degrees Celsius. So to put in the oven the next day, in my case, I turn the banneton, I put the dough pieces on a wooden board with a lot of flour on, on top, so like that it doesn't stick. And I flour the top of my dough pieces for just aesthetic side. And then I cut. Here I do a four line cut. You can also do a cross if you wish or any other cut. For the batter, I put my blade at 45 degrees and I make an incision over the entire length. The same for the second, 45 degrees, and I make a sharp and clean cut. Here you can see that the cut has an inclination and that it's relatively clean. Here is it, the baking is over. I let my loaves cool down and we can see that the first bowl where I made four cuts was not deep enough, which means that it didn't open properly on some sides, but it's not very serious. It's still pretty, but think about cutting quite deeply, but when you cut at 45 degrees, you don't really need to go too deep, but it depends also on your dough. For the other bread, nothing to say. Beautiful cut, amazing bread. I am now going to cut the first round in two parts to look inside and you can see a great color, a little creamy and 
Yeah, it's just beautiful, big bubbles inside, it's perfect. The second round, the cut was more successful and opened well. So I cut it to check inside and same as the one before. Very beautiful. So if you follow all these steps, you should have a nice sourdough bread, nothing very complicated. You just make the right mixture, let the right resting time, the right temperature from the start, the right temperature at the end of kneading, a fridge that works properly, a good baking, and you're on your way to have a beautiful bread without too much effort. Thank you for watching the video to the end. Don't hesitate to subscribe to support me. Give it a like, leave a comment if you have questions or just want to express your opinion. And see you next time.